Right, the IDP uh, film car, we've got a Ford. We've just literally gone and bought one of these readers for the uh, for the car. This has never been done, Ford's never done it. So if you want to connect one of these, you've got to find the port. So here, you've got a, a storage bin. We've had the car for about five years. We never knew it was there. So we've looked at it. We thought, is the port underneath here? We've used a, a mirror. Can't find it anywhere. But would you believe it? After about two minutes, if you squeeze this in, guess what's there? That's the bit we've got to plug in. So what you've got to do is, it's in a shape. Okay, make sure the unit's off. Get it the right way. Notice the lights on the uh, snap-on will go green. So it means it's got connection. Now let's get to the uh, ignition. So what it's going to do, it's going to see the car, but what you're going to do is turn the ignition on first. Let's bump the keys down there a sec. Ignition's on. <clears throat> let's turn the fan off a minute. It's all that going. So what we want to do is, you want to do to a scanner. Now we know it's a Ford, so it's a car, not a motorbike. So we're going to go to Ford, which is there. There's all sorts of cars, by the way. Let's just let's just flick down here a sec. So on the menu, we've got all the manufacturers. It does Volvo, Renault, Subaru, Seat, Rover. Uh, US vehicles it does as well and look at the name Suzuki Peugeot we're gonna go Ford right there's Ford we're gonna push OK to that now it should find the Ford automatically now do we want an automatic ID or manual we're gonna leave it an automatic so it'll find the car ignition is on so we're gonna push continue it's getting the uh, data off the ECU so it should recognise what vehicle it is. Right, a one litre petrol. Now, uh, European model. It's going to be that one, European, not the Ds. Obviously, we got 105 PSI in this one. So it's that one. So, 2012 Ford Focus, one litre Eco Pop uh, petrol which it is, 105, that's all okay. Let's click on to that. Actually, let's just go back a minute, because what I'm gonna do is just check the VIN number, see the VIN, so stay there a minute. So it says 3011. 3011, so make sure it's got the right car. Back on. It is, it is the beast. So the VIN number's correct, so it's recognised. It hasn't come up with the mileage for some reason. Uh, scan all codes. You can clear the codes if you've got some faults. So you can do all this, we're just going to go to scan. Make sure the ignition's on. Continue. Pre-scan or post-scan. We're going to do a pre-scan because it's never been done before. But it's come up with a, a, a yellow sort of amber at the moment. Now don't forget, we've had this car since 2012. This has never been done. Maybe a battery has been uh, low before. 38%, analyzing seven modules in the car so far. On a Range Rover, you've got 42. On the Ferrari, we've got 64, I think. And the BMW, I've got a feeling that was 40 something. So this should be around 20, I would have thought. Systems analyzing. If it's any more than 20, I'll be very surprised. Actually, it's got to 13. Yeah, when it won't be more than 20. Because <coughs> it's not an electronic car. Now, what it'll do, it'll come up with any faults to tell us. 
Right, systems detected 15. Let me just scroll through them and it will reset these in a minute. Airbags are okay. All these modules are okay. Oh, here you go. Let me just read what it says at the moment. We're going to reset all this in a minute in case the battery, the main battery in the car has ever been low. Misfires, never misfire. The fuel system's okay. It's never been done, has it? On this no. ever. Oxygen sensor's okay. First time we <clears> so what we're going to do, we're going to reset it all. We're going to clear all the codes. Okay, make sure it's on. What it's doing is resetting every module in the car now. We're going to do this, disconnect it, take it for a drive, redo the codes, and it should say zero faults with the codes. Right, there you go. Engine codes all clear. Anti-lock brakes. Airbag, there was a code. Body module, there was a code. Parking brake and all that. So let's just <coughs> come out of it a minute. So let's go back. Let's go to home be easier, I think. Let's go there. Just go there. Right, there we go. Turn this off. Power off is okay. Then you disconnect this module. Actually, turn the ignition off first. Right, that's off. Then you pull this unit out. Now, listen, it's as simple as that. Now, I can't recommend snap on and off for um, at all. It does virtually everything you want. There are four different sorts. This was about three grand. You've got the license in for what I think we bought for five years, so it updates every quarter. Uh, top of the range kit. Uh, it's even got a stand on the back, so you can put it onto your work environment. But also the lead is that long, you can actually have it plugged in here and work work by the engine. It also fits onto the steering wheel. Steering wheel. You can have it like that on the wheel if you wanted to. If you're in the car, stand alone. But, <clears throat> Nice length of um, cable, isn't it? Oh, and it's, nice it's, bit of kit, that is. And it's powered, Paul. It, it's, it's got its own battery uh, supply in the back. Lithium ion. Lithium ion, which is built into there, but it takes its power off the... Uh, yeah, from the car. Off the car. So there you go. Let's turn, let's turn it off. Super bit of kit. Right, no, listen, that's as simple as that. So if you've got a Ford, I recommend buying one of these or a cheaper version. Scanning your codes because you might have a code which is coming up like anti lock brakes airbags Which is not working, but you don't know it If you go to the dealership, they will charge you 100 or 200 pounds just to read your ECU So do it yourself do it on a regular basis. And you know everything in the car is working airbags lights horn seat belts Rear brake calipers rear brakes You can actually retract them to put no, the pads that's only on the Porsche and the Range Rover does that. Okay. The Aston Martin does that as well. Mm. This is just basic stuff. Um, just everything on the car you can do. You can even turn off the chime for the warning seatbelt. You know, you haven't got the seatbelts on, it chimes, do, 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 do. You can turn that off and just have the red man flashing. What about code in the battery? When you, well, that's on the big cars. Yeah. <clears throat> if you have a Range Rover, you put a new battery in it. You have to recode the car to tell it's got a new battery. This is a fairly dumb car, mm -hmm. so you just connect it. Actually, you might do that on this car. Put a new battery in it. Probably tell the ECU it's got a new battery in it. But those, can't recommend it enough. We've had it a day. We flashed the uh, Range Rover. We've done the Aston Martin. We've done the Ferrari. We've done the big BM. Seven Series BM. BM. Seven Series BMW. What other cars we've got to do on it yet? Yeah. The Mini S. Oh, the mini sports we've got to do, uh, Mark's girlfriends we've got to do, uh, blah, blah, blah. So it's very good. There you go. A little yeah, short video. I can't highly rec recommend it enough. It's superb.